Praise the Lord and good morning to every one of God's children. I am so delighted this morning that God has blessed you and me to be able to connect once again on another presentation of Cross Nation Ministries located here in the city of Buffalo, the city of good neighbors. I am excited in my heart knowing that our God is with us, our God is for us, and our God lives in us. And with that knowledge, it gives me peace. It gives me a sense of being together in my spirit, in my soul, and my body. And I am so grateful to our great God for each one of you that have taken the time out to be with us this morning. I am so grateful for Cross Nation uh, Ministry family. This is a wonderful family of God's people. And I just thank God for them. And I want you to know this morning, Cross Nation Ministries, God has smiled on you and God has blessed you. And not only you, but the friends of this ministry that have come alongside and support and give of their time and their talents and uh, has been a blessing to this ministry. And I want everyone to know that I am thankful in my heart because God has been just what he said he would be. He has done what he said he will do, and I am encouraged. And like James Cleveland say, I feel no ways tired. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I'm excited in my heart and my soul, uh, in my very being, that God has delivered as he promised. This is why his promises can be trusted, because all of his promises are yea and amen. So this morning, I am grateful that God has blessed Cross Nation Ministries once again to be able to be aired on this platform, uh, Facebook Live. And I give him all the praise and I give him all the glory. And I want to encourage each one of you, continue to be supportive uh, to Cross Nation Ministries in giving of your tithe and your offerings. And also, uh, you have been a blessing to Kingdom Chairs Outreach. And I have informed you uh, as well as uh, Elder Timothy Sanders and Dr. April Sanders, that uh, Kingdom Chairs was delayed and the uh, project is not over yet and you can still participate uh, in supporting Kingdom Chairs Outreach. Each chair costs approximately $50, including shipping and handling, if you will. And you can still participate in that, and you will be informed how you can participate at the end of the service today. But the shipment is scheduled for the 27th of February, and I believe God. We just need your continual help. And I believe, children of God, that God is going to allow us to be able to come back together in the not too distant future because I just feel very optimistic. I feel very, very encouraged in my spirit uh, for what God is doing and what God has done in the name of Jesus to Christ our Lord. So let us prepare now to uh, go before God in prayer. God is a prayer answering God. And he is there to bless his people, his sons, his daughters, and our families, because that's the kind of God we serve. Continue to pray for one another. Let's keep one another in our prayers. 
uh, in the name of Jesus. Let's love one another as the Lord has instructed us. And when we do so, it keeps us fully in alignment with God's will and with God's purpose in our lives. So let us now pause for a moment to acknowledge the presence of our great God and petition him and thank him for his grace and mercy. Eternal God, our Father, this morning, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, Father, we thank you that you have allowed us once again to be able to come together in fellowship, in praise, in worship, in prayer. And Father, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, Lord, because you are the only wise God there is. You are the one, O oh God, who supplies our every need. You are the God who empowers us, who enables us, who energizes us, who keep us, Lord God, from falling. You are the one, O oh God, that is always there to see us through. And Father, we thank you this morning that you have adopted us into your family, granting us the privilege, O oh God, to be heirs of God, joint heir with Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray this morning, O oh God, that you will allow the heavens remain open over the lives of every one of your sons and every one of your daughters. Help us to be all that you have called us to be. And Father, I ask, O oh God, that you would continue to bless Cross Nation Ministries Oh God, as this ministry reach throughout these United States and beyond into other countries. Father, we love you, Lord, and we appreciate, we are thankful to what you are doing for us, in us. And we thank you, Lord God, how you have supplied our every need. Now, Lord, we ask that you would remember those that are sick in their bodies, Lord. Oh God, whatever the illness is, I'm asking you to heal and deliver and set free. In the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord, remember those families, Lord, that have been affected by this coronavirus. We ask in your Lord to intercede, oh God, intervene, oh God, and bring a good thing out of an unclean thing. Father, in the name of Jesus, Satan desires to destroy us, but you are for us. And if God be for us, he is more than the whole world against us. Thank you this morning for being such a wonderful Savior and a wonderful Lord. Now, Lord, bless every one of your sons and daughters that as a part of this service on this day, Bless every family that is represented, and we will praise your name forever and forever. For we ask these blessings in that name that is above every name, the name Lord Jesus Christ. And let the people of God say, Amen and Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I am so grateful this morning that you are with me uh, on another presentation of Cross Nation Ministries located here in the city of Buffalo, the city of good neighbors. Now, we're going to get right into the Word of God. And I am believing that God is going to take us higher. He's going to take us deeper in Him. And the Lord has commissioned me and encouraged me and enabled me to continue to teach and to preach his word, emphasizing our need uh, for Christ, to be more like him, and to preach and teach his word. Because, children of God, the more we know about God, the greater our faith and the greater our trust in him. 
And so this morning, we're going to start a new series of messages. And I want you to be with me uh, during these series of messages that you can get everything that God has laid on our hearts to share with you. We're going to start a new series of messages on the title, Why Do We Need to Seek God's Face? Why do we need to seek God's face? Make a note of that. We're going to be on it just for a short period of time. And I'm, I'm going to give you an introduction today uh, in the name of Jesus to these messages. Why do we need to seek God's face? If there ever was a time to seek God's face, that time is right now. The world is in a bad state right now. These times was predicted in the word of God. God said, in the last days, perilous times shall come, troublesome times. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, proud, boastful, blasphemous, heady, high-minded, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. In other words, a lot of selfishness, a lot of greed, a lot of self-serving will be taking place in our world. And the thing that is so important, children of God, that our God does not change our gods can still be trusted. So to study uh, why do we need to seek God's face is timely. And I would encourage every one of you to make up in your mind that you are going to stay connected and you're going to stay in the position so God can continue to use you so that you can be all that he desires you to be during these challenging times and be prepared to go back with him when he comes. So, get ready now and let us pursue these uh, messages that I will be sharing with you uh, if the Lord wills uh, for the next few times we are together. Make a note of it. Why do we need to seek God's face? Now, the foundational scripture that I want us to look at this morning is recorded in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12 through verse number 15. That is 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12 through verse number 15. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want us to read that. Turn with me in your Bibles because as we share scripture together, it will support, if you will, why do we need to seek God's face? Now, Second Chronicles, if you will, Uh, Chapter 7, verse 12 through verse 15, it says, And the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night, and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then 
will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Verse 15. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word and sanctify it in our very hearts. Why do we need to seek God's face? And, and we may just deal with, just for a moment, what does the face of God represent? What does the face of God represent? In other words, the face of God represents divine continents. Divine uh, continents. In other words, it's God's continents. Continents. Praise the name of the Lord. But it's divine. The presence of God. It represents the presence of God. God's face. It represents the will of God. It represents communion with God. It represents fellowship with God. So why do we need to seek God's face? And what God's face represents? Divine continents. God's presence. The will of God. Communion with God. Fellowship with God. And ultimately, to worship God. It is important, children of God, to remember these key words. And as we pursue and as we unwrap, if you will, the Word of God, as we look at the series of messages, it should encourage and inspire you to develop a relationship with God that is unshakable because you are seeking his face, seeking his divine countenance, seeking his divine presence. You are in communion and fellowship with him and you become a worshiper of God himself. This is important because the challenging times in which we live. Now, within each person, there is a deep desire to be in the presence of God. God created us that way. Within each person, there is a deep desire to be in the presence of God. You may not understand it fully. You may not even be aware of it. But there is a passion in your heart to be where God is. God made you that way and that deserve or desire is never satisfied until you are in his presence. It is a universal human need 
to be in the presence of God. God has created you and I in such a way that we will hunger and we will thirst after him until we find him because the Lord has created us in his image, created us in his likeness. And it is a basic need in the human heart to be where God is. Our happiness is never fully realized until we find that relationship that God has created in us to be fulfilled. You see, man was created by God to be a worshiper. Make a note of that. Man was created by God to be a worshiper. The issue is not whether you are going to worship, but whom or what you are going to worship. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm trying to lay an introduction or a foundation for our series of messages this morning. So, in that God has created us to be worshipers, it is important that we worship the true and the living God because the issue is not whether we are going to worship. The issue is to whom or to what we are going to worship because you are created to be a worshiper. In the old days, if you will, people worship idols. They would build a golden calf or some other creature, and they would bow down to worship it. Today, this day, 2021, today, men and women are still searching to find someone or something to worship. And it's important that whatever we worship is God, the true and living God. Praise the name of the Lord. All mankind, even the worst sinner in the world, is a worshiper. He may worship money, sex, a political system, or power, but it is still a worshiper. Are you listening, children of God? The object of worship is important because God has created everyone to be a worshiper. And God wants you and me to worship him because we were created in his image, created in his likeness. We must not be like the world. The word of God said, be in the world, but not of the world. So the world today are worshiping, but they are worshiping the wrong thing. Money, sex, political systems, power. Praise the name of the Lord. Ultimately, it is important to come to the realization that worshiping of God is where what God wants us to be. It's important, saints of God. Ultimately, man will seek after God if he's instructed and he hears the word of God. I don't know whether you remember in John's Gospel, in John's Gospel, chapter 4, Jesus asked a Samaritan woman at the well to draw water for him. Praise the name of the Lord. She was shocked. 
she came during the middle of the day when all the other women were at home. Praise the name of the Lord. I know you remember that in John's chapter 4. She couldn't come when the other women came to the well because she was an outcast. She was a prostitute. When Jesus asked her for a drink, she was surprised that a Jew would ask a Samaritan like himself to draw water for him. She couldn't understand this. Then Jesus began to minister to her. He said, go and get your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. Supernaturally, Jesus knew many things about this woman. He said, you have rightly answered, if you will, that you have no husband. He said, you have had five husbands, and the man you are living with now is not your husband. Again, Jesus was shocked, or she was shocked, I should say. She was, was shocked, predicated upon how Jesus respond to the answer she gave. Praise the name of the Lord. And she said, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Jesus knew that sexual immorality was not the answer to this woman's problem. Just like he knows the answer to all of mankind's problem. She was jumping from one husband to another and from one bed to another because she thought that sex was the answer to the desire she had inside of her. As I said, God has created us to be worshipers. And this is important for everyone to understand. Mankind does not understand that sex will not fulfill the longing and the desire we experience deep in our hearts. Money is not the answer either. Power is not the answer. Only when you meet God do you find the answer to the longing inside. Only when you worship him and sit in his presence are you truly content. Only then is the hunger for fellowship, the hunger to be with God is satisfied is when we are in the presence of God. This is why there is a need to seek God's face. When we seek God's face, we are seeking his presence. We are seeking communion with him. We are seeking fellowship with him. Praise the name of our God. You see, Jesus, as he spoke to this woman, Jesus knew that sex was not meeting the Samaritan woman's need. He knew that. He knew that it could not satisfy her. But he didn't rebuke her. That's the love of our God. He did not rebuke her. He didn't say, woman, you are a great sinner. How could you resort with all those men? He didn't say that. He knew what her real problem was, like he knows 
exactly what our problems are, and he understands them clearly and completely. He said to the woman, but the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship not men, not immorality, but that true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Praise the name of our God. This is important. This is key. And I would suggest at some point you would reread, if you will, the story of the uh, uh, Samaritan woman in John's chapter 4. In other words, that statement that Jesus made to the Samaritan woman, that but the hour cometh, and now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh, that's today, seeketh such to worship him. This is a powerful statement. Think about it. The Father seeks you to worship him. Let me say that again. The Father seeketh you to worship him. This is something, that, that, in other words, that there is something in the heart of God that is seeking after you, after me. God wants you to worship him. He wants you to fellowship with him. He wants you to be with him. God wants to recreate, if you will, in the time in which we are living, he really wants to recreate the same kind of atmosphere, the same kind of relationship that he had with Adam and Eve in the garden before they sinned. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, when God originally created Adam and Eve, he had fellowship with them every day, every day. They had communion together. They were in his presence. He would come in the cool of the evening and walk in the garden with them. That was the original plan of God for the human race. That he would have that consistent fellowship with his sons and daughters. But sin caused a separation in the fellowship that God desires for every one of us to experience with him. And so God laid on my heart to share with you, to share with us, if you will, to deal with the question, why do we need to seek God's face? Praise the name of our God. Why do we need to seek God's face? It's a good question. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and the, the second question, what does the face of God represent? Just a reminder, God's face represents divine countenance. It represents the presence of God. It represents the will of God. 
It represents communion with God and fellowship with God. This is absolutely, positively necessary for us to understand so that we can walk according to his will, according to his purpose, as we seek the face of God each and every day of our lives. Now, number one note I want you to place this morning because we're going to talk about it consistently until we finish this series of messages. The face of God gives the assurance of his presence. That's number one. The face of God gives the assurance of his presence. That's the reason why we seek his face. His face, the face of God, give the assurance of his presence. And I want you to look in Genesis 28 and 15. Genesis 28 and 15. Number one in your notes, the face of God gives the assurance of his presence. Genesis 28 and 15 says, And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until... I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Now, the Lord was speaking to his children, the Israelites, in this particular text. But the principle is applicable to those of us who are members of the body of Christ in the new covenant. Because God does not change. As God was directing his people, the Israelites, that same kind of direction, the principles, is applicable to each one of us today. As you should have made note, the face of God gives the assurance of his presence. That's the reason. Why do we seek? Why do we need to seek God's face? The face of God gives the assurance of his presence. And as recorded here in Genesis 5, uh, 28 and 15, look at what he says again. Look at it one more time. This is applicable to you. It applies to you. It's because you belong to God. He says, And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places. Notice that. I will keep thee in all places, whether thou goest. In other words, wherever you go, as you continue to seek the face of God, he promised, I'll be with you whithersoever thou goest, and I will bring thee again into this land. In other words, wherever God wants you to be, wherever God wants you to settle, whatever God wants you to achieve, God says, wherever you go, I'll be with you and I'll bring you back to the place where I want you to be. That's what the face of God means. And he says, for I will not leave thee. Notice, I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken unto thee. In other words, God is a promise keeping God. His promises are yea and amen. 
if God makes you a promise, he will keep it. And our responsibility should be to seek his face daily. Praise the name of our God. It should be a lifestyle. There's another passage of scripture I want you to add by number one, if you will. The face of God gives the assurance of his presence. I want you to make a note of Matthew 28 and verse number 20. Matthew 28, verse number 20. This is instruction that he gave his the disciples, praise the name of the Lord, after he was resurrected from the dead. This is instruction. In other words, the face of God gives the assurance of his presence. Look at what he says. He was saying, go, teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have command you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. In other words, when the Lord gives you direction, he promised he will be with you. In other words, his presence. And as we seek his face daily, everything that God promised will come to pass. This is why it is so important, children of God, to be mindful at all times that you are never alone. God promised I'll be with you always. Let me give you Another scripture that I want you to add by number one this morning, Acts 18 and 10. Acts 18 and 10. This is, this is key. Acts 18 and 10. Note number one is the face of God gives the assurance of his presence. Acts 18 and 10 says, For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in the city. The Lord was speaking to uh, 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 the, uh, his disciples that they didn't have to worry about what may take place in the city because wherever God sends us or sends his people, the way is already made and the protection is already in place. This is why it is important to recognize when you receive a word from God to do this or do that or go there, you are never alone because when God send you forth, there are angels that encamps around about you because you are an heir of salvation. And the angels are ministering spirits that looks out for the children of God as they carry out the will of God. So one can always rest assured that God is with them to see them through in every circumstance. So this morning, children of God, we uh, want you to make note. Why do we need to seek God's face? Praise the name of our God. Number one, the face of God gives assurance of his presence. This is why the word of God tells the child of God in his presence is fullness of joy. What does that mean? The joy of the Lord is our strength. And as we seek his face, we are seeking his presence. And his face brings us into his divine presence. And when you are in the presence of God, you are energized 
you are enabled, you are anointed to do whatever it is that God has assigned to your hand. This is why it is so important, children of God, as we live our lives, and especially today, when all of the challenges and all of the problems that we have to deal with, we must know, we must understand that seeking God's face should become a lifestyle. It should be something that we begin every day with and close every day. Children of God, I encourage you to work on your relationship with God by seeking His face each and every day. As you seek the face of God, it gives you the assurance of the presence of God. It's the same principle as you stand in the presence of another man or another woman looking into their face, you are in their presence. The same principle applies when we seek the face of God. We are seeking His presence. We are living in His presence. We have fellowship in His presence. We have communion in His presence. We are in the will of God in His presence and His divine countenance is in our presence. And in His presence is the fullness of joy. I encourage you today to keep on keeping on seeking the face of God. Don't let any situation, don't let any circumstance prevent you from being all that God has created you to be. And allow Him to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. And that will happen if you continue to realize that you are a worshiper and you worship him in spirit and in truth. And in doing so, you can rest in his presence. I thank God for each and every one of you this morning have taken the time out to be with me on another presentation of Cross Nation Ministries located here in the city of Buffalo. I pray that God's blessing will rest upon you and yours all the days of your life. And children of God, let every day be a day that you would seek God's face. Praise the name of our God. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful morning, this beautiful day, this beautiful life. We thank you, Lord God, for a beautiful future that is laid up for each one of us. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless your sons and daughters continuously. And Father, remember those that do not know you. O oh God, bring salvation to the lost. O oh God, bless them as you bless that Samaritan woman that you met at the well. O oh God, give them everlasting running fresh water open a well in their souls that the water will spring up to everlasting life we praise you we thank and praise you O oh god for what you've already done and what you're doing right now we give you all the glory and all the honor in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Savior and our God. Thank you this morning, children of God, 
for being with me on another presentation of Cross Nation Ministries. Now, I want you to stay connected. Matter of fact, give God praise. Give Him a praise because you are a worshiper and that you seek the face of God each and every day of your life. Praise the name of our God. Please continue to support this ministry with your prayers and with your tithing offering in the name of Jesus the Christ. I love you in the name of Jesus and I want you now to remain connected. Stay tuned to hear a word from Elder Timothy Sanders in the name of the Lord. Have a blessed day. May God's grace and mercy continue to shine upon you and may you continue to seek his face in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the face of God gives the assurance of his presence. Praise the Lord, Cross Nation family and friends. We're so glad that you joined us here another Sunday morning here at Cross Nation. Why do we need to seek God's face? What an awesome message given by our apostle Robert L. Sanders Sr. And if there ever was a time that we need to be in the face of God, it is right now. It is today. I commission you to get in your word, come to know God for yourself as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And once again, we're just glad that you decided to join us here. And I want you just to um, keep Cross Nation in your prayers and in your thoughts as we begin to grow this ministry. Because one day we're going to be here back in the sanctuary giving God the praise and the glory. We also wanted to give you an opportunity to support Cross Nation, and you can do that three ways. You can either do that through the Cash App, or you can do that through the Giveify app, or if you want to send in your check or money order um, into Cross Nation, you can mail it to 550 Genesee Street, Buffalo, New York, 14204. And there's only one thing that I ask you to do on today, is just to have an awesome and an excellent day.